Good day, fellow investors. Today we are going to discuss market sentiment. I have always been a fundamental analyst, a fundamental investor, so I would like to see value and then invest at a low valuation, possibly where the earnings give me my returns. However, something that I cannot disregard because it is really a very important driver to stock prices and to the investing environment is market sentiment. And let me start with two quotes from Keynes. So the market can remain irrational longer than you can remain solvent, which is very important if you want to short the market that looks overvalued. Or, much heavier statement, there is nothing so disastrous as rational investment policy in an irrational world. We can think we are rational, but if the world is irrational, we have to really adapt to the world or to see how our strategy fits the rational world. Let's dig deeper into market sentiment and how it affects the stock market. Researchers also back in the 1990s have found that irrational noise traders really distort the market and they can keep those irrational moves, as Keynes said, very, very long in the market so that it doesn't really pay to be an arbitrageur. It doesn't really pay to short the market when it is irrational, highly overpriced or to go against the trend when it goes down because those irrational traders are really, really powerful. And when those who are rational understand that those irrational forces are powerful, you are not going to bet against it. So the irrational forces going up or down are becoming then even more powerful. And that's very interesting because you have to see the market not as fundamentals but unfortunately as trends. Just an example of how trends work, here we can see the hedge fund leverage. As stocks prices went up in the last two years, more and more hedge funds have been going into equities, have been going long into equities by using more and more leverage. So hedge funds, instead of creating a rational market, they are really trying to take advantage of the trends. So they buy more and more equities. If we look at the short sentiment at the short interest rate as the share of market capitalization, as stock prices go higher, higher and higher, people are short less, less and less. So it's very interesting how even hedge funds that are supposed to correct the market from its irrationality, they are really trading into the trend. When the stocks go up, they are leveraging to go up. And when the stocks will go down, they will leverage to go down. But usually after what happens. So now that stocks are very, very high, there is more and more buying and there is more and more leverage. If we look at the sentiment index, it is very positive now. It has been very positive in 2013, 2010, 2008 and 2007. However, in two after 2007, after 2008, after 2011, stocks have always dropped when the sentiment was positive. 2013 stocks didn't drop, 2015 they did drop a little bit, we have those two corrections and now the sentiment is again very positive and going into the positive. Whether stocks will drop or not, the sentiment that looks at the VIX index, at volatility options, says that usually after a positive sentiment stocks drop. However, we never know if that actually will happen. If we look at the S&P 500, we can really see how it works in long-term trends. Before the 1990s, it went up, sharp drop. From the 1990s till 2000, up, sharp drop. 2000, 2007, up, sharp drop. And now we have seen 2009, 2017, 18, really going upwards in a strong, strong trend. So if you're a fundamental investor, if you look at for example, the CAPE ratio, you would have probably sold in 1992, 1993, where the CAPE ratio was above 20, saying stocks are overvalued. And then you wouldn't have even touched the market up till 2008, 9, probably bought before the cr crash, sold in 2010 for a small profit, and then missed out on the perfect trend that went up for the next 10 years. So you would have sold in 2009, so you would have sold in 1990 and sold in 2010. If you're a fundamental investor that has some clear rules about when to invest, then you wouldn't have done that good and the market would have extremely outperformed you. 
Perhaps those who in 1990 invested in bonds, that's a different story. They would have outperformed the market in the long term. But that's something that we can touch on some other videos. Now, another thing is, okay, you see the market is overvalued. It just goes up. And now I will tell you why nobody is going to short that market because it doesn't pay. In the last 30 years, 25 years have seen growing stock prices and only five have seen declining stock prices. So if you're a hedge, an arbitrageur, and you say, okay, I'm bet against the market, then you would have been wrong in 25 years and correct only five years. That's a very, very difficult hedging strategy to sustain or to convince the clients that it will do well. So that's why nobody is hedging now the market and the short interest of the stock market is very, very low. What to do? Well, if you have taken advantage of the trends now, after eight, 10 years, you really have to start thinking about hedging yourself. So we have to take advantage of the trends and then protect ourselves from the inevitable sharp declines and trends that are going to turn, are going to reverse at some point. I have made a video about the seven hedges. We will discuss more hedges. So please subscribe to the channel. I'm looking forward to your comments. Look at the hedging video and I'll see you in the next video.